share those with you. But go ahead, in terms of this African connection and the way that I've been exposed to it, is that when you study the pineal gland, and when you hear about melatonin, you won't hear any of this that we're talking about now. They had to talk about melatonin these days for one very good reason. Because you had begun to read about it and talk about it and ask questions and to do things in your own operations. I begin to get phone calls from brothers in Trinidad, sisters in Jamaica. I began to hear people were listening to these audio tapes in Ethiopia and in Ghana and in Zaire. My brother, my own blood brother, who was traveling, speaking to Africa, so he was walking to an airport one day in, 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 um, in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. His sister walked up to him and said, oh, is your brother Richard King? Your voice sounds just like him. I got my tape right next to me. So that's what I'm saying. The word has been spread, not my word, because many have gone before me talking about the pineal gland. But melatonin, it came up that through our work we came to see that black people have different levels of melatonin in their bodies. Black people have much more active pineal glands than white folks. I repeat that. Black folks have much more active pineal glands than most white folks. Not all, but I'm saying in a general kind of sense that the pineal hormone that was being produced by black folks was about two times the amount of pineal hormone that was being produced by white folks. Now do you understand why they must take those pills? Now do you understand why they must take those pills? And guess what else? Not only is it a question of the melatonin pill, it was also a question, here's the big fundamental question, of what's happening in the ozone layer. In these next five years, most of America, most of South America, Central Europe and Asia, and Africa in particular, will be exposed to almost lethal doses of ultraviolet light, B and even C. And what does that mean for people who have blonde skin or red skin? It means either your skin must become darker or your incidence of skin cancer will become so great that you will not reach late adulthood. You will not reach late adulthood. In the next five years, Dr. King, where do I find that reference? You find that reference in the Tuesday to the LA Times and in the issue of the journal called Nature, published in England. So that's where you go back to the issue of the LA Times, and you'll find it in, in, in I think, in the first few sections. In the next, five, that means between 1995 and the year what? 2000. In the year 2000. And what does melatonin do? They will not tell you in these little health journals that melatonin turns on pigment cell skin production. They don't tell you that. They, now some people say that melatonin will lead to less actual sexual function. Is that true of all people? No, that's part of our concern as a people. We have to in turn our socialization skills. No by no means. It has a different kind of function for people of different kinds of pigmentation and a very opposite kind of function for another kind of pigmentation kind of scheme. But nonetheless, melatonin, a hormone released by the pineal gland during nighttime. It was said to have been discovered for the first time in 1956 by Axelrod and Workman. How could that be? If when you can go right now to the great to, to the to the museum in Cairo and look at King Tut's tomb, the second shrine, the right panel and see a scene that shows the sun putting rays of light into the forehead where the pine was located. And there's only one thing in that anatomical location that responds to sunlight and moonlight, and that's the pineal. So through, that was 1550 BC. So how could it be that 3,300 years 
before white folks rediscovered the pineal gland, Africans knew about it in detail. But guess what? That was nothing new. That was old. It was known because even going further back, the so-called pyramid texts, and I'll read to you a few of them in just a minute. <laughs> in the pyramid text, written again way back at the early in the so-called Old Kingdom times, they talk about this thing. They didn't call it the pineal gland. It was called the Eye of Horus. The Eye of Horus. Let me read to you what it says in a few places, and we'll be getting the slideshow in just a few minutes. I have two books that will be available at the front and also back at the desk. The African Origin of Biological Psychiatry and Melanin, the Key to Freedom. I want to quote two of his lecture from both. But here it reads. This is reading from the pyramid text. Now they even knew about what happened when your eye, when your inner eye wasn't working correctly. They said that if you had a defective eye, and if you look at blackness with a defective eye, guess what happened? You saw the opposites of what really was there. That if your eye was injured, your inner eye was injured, you could look at black and you would think you were looking at white. So in other words, it causes a reversal of the images. So I'm reading to you from, page, uh, from paragraph 157 from the coffin text. And you can buy the coffin, they're available one paperback. He said, and it's raised there to heart, let me see your eye, since this happened to it. Now again, this is Sun God Ra, this is a mytholo mythological statement, saying that light is speaking to his son, after his son has had his eye damaged. And there are at least two levels of discourse here. One level is that Horus was battling Seth. Who is Seth? At one time in history, Seth was a positive southern god, tied to the moon. We won't be able to go into all that kind of dialogue just now. Later on, Seth became known as if people with sunborn, sunburned skin, the red of skin, and it became synonymous with Europeans who were crossing over the deserts trying to re-enter home. 